His Highness Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, His Highness Crown Prince Sheikh Hamda bin Mohammed Al Maktoum, dear Jim, dear friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank the Prime Minister for making this event in our visit possible. The OECD has been a strategic partner of the World Government Summit since its inaugural meeting in 2013. Our collaboration builds on the role of the OECD as a hub and a facilitator for global governance, but also on our growing relations with the United Arab Emirates in the Middle East, in North Africa, the MENA region, more broadly. We just celebrated the 10th anniversary of our OECD MENA program, which was renewed for another five years. Before speaking about the OECD MENA relationship, as well as our common efforts to address the region's main challenges, let me provide some context with a brief global and regional economic outlook. The world economic outlook is still clouded by important uncertainties. We expect the global economy to have grown by around 3% in 2015, the weakest growth since 2009, well below what we call the cruising speed. You know, before the crisis, we were growing at 4%. So after eight years of crisis, we're still not there growing at the speed that we had before the crisis. Business investment in OECD countries remains subdued. It's growing at about 3% instead of growing at about 7%. Over 2015 and 2016, we also project that trade is growing at about half the speed it should be growing. Trade should be growing at about double the rate of growth of the world economy. Credit has stalled, particularly in the euro area, and in many small and medium enterprises are not having access to credit. Now, the outlook for emerging economies, which had been the engine of growth in the last 10 years, is a particular source of global uncertainty, given their large contribution to global trade and to GDP growth. Recessions in Brazil, and in Russia, actually enter, entering their second year. Uh, the slowdown in China are hitting activity in key trading partners. Talk of a new era of less cheap money and lower prices of international commodities are sobering prospects for many emerging economies. Thus, we foresee a very gradual improvement in our global economic outlook with growth slowly strengthening to reach 3.6 percent by 2017. Really gradual, really slow recovery. This global outlook exacerbates the challenges faced by the energy region, where slow growth, high unemployment, and rising inequalities continue to make it more difficult for the region to reach its potential. The region has not seen its overall growth surpass 3% for over three years. I'm talking about the averages for the region. With strong heterogeneity between countries, particularly between oil exporters and importers. In addition, the security situation in some countries in the region has forced millions to flee their homes. It is therefore more important than ever that we strengthen our collaboration to help these countries promote a more resilient more inclusive, more sustainable growth. Now, for more than a decade now, the OECD has been working with the MENA region, helping its governments design effective reforms. We call it the MENA OECD Initiative. Our ongoing cooperation with the United Arab Emirates is producing important results in the fields of education, of gender, on public governance, on small and medium enterprises. Our cooperation on public governance 
and gender equality have supported the establishment of institutions like the United Arab Emirates Gender Balance Council. And I have to say, today, we were very proud to meet the head of the uh, National Council, the equivalent to your national parliament, uh, a very distinguished woman, and of course, to meet yet again with your Minister of Development Cooperation, um, the first minister, the first woman minister that you had here, two firsts, congratulations, um, your highness. We have been working with the Gender Balance Council in the promotion of better opportunities, decent jobs for women, and the Mohammed bin Rashid Center for Government Innovation, which aims to support equal access and quality of public services to people, including women. We're also a key partner to the United Arab Emirates effort to strengthen the country's data collection capacity, which culminated in the creation of the Federal Competitiveness and Statistics Authority in November of last year. We like to say, Your Highness, that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So having a better statistical capacity is, of course, crucial in order to be able to address many of the public uh, policy challenges. We want to strengthen our collaboration with the United Arab Emirates, and actually with the whole of the MENA region, to keep promoting best practices. We need to focus all this collaboration on the promotion of more inclusive growth. Now, the OECD can provide a strong support to make the MENA region more inclusive through a new type of growth that promotes prosperity for all. Our organization is actively shaping the debate on sustainable development through our, we call it, All on Board for Inclusive Growth Initiative. And, uh, you know, we, we, this is the answer to inequality. Inequality is hurting us all. Inequality is growing and it grew exponentially during the crisis. And the response has to be all on board, making inclusive growth happen. And we're working with you to make it happen also here. Only last week, we launched our new report, Youth in the MENA Region. We, this is part of the work that we've been doing now for almost uh, 10 years here. It shows how the absence of a framework for inclusive growth has left young men and women in the region vulnerable. The evidence, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, your highness, Jim, you work on this every day. You're in the battlefront here. The evidence is staggering. Youth unemployment rates have skyrocketed. 51% in Libya, 39% in Egypt, 38% in the Palestinian authorities. But I also must tell you that in some European countries, in some of the most developed countries in the world, youth unemployment is upwards of 40, even 50%. It is the curse of modern times. It is a very, very painful legacy of the crisis. The report also shows that young people in many countries express less trust in government than their parents. We are going backwards in terms of trust. We cannot stress enough the importance of young people's voices, that they are not left out of the policy debates which shape our future. Jim was talking about inclusive government, and this is, of course, part of the challenge. We're also focusing on the question of gender equality, as I mentioned, an essential ingredient in helping to mobilize all human potential, both men and women. Our evidence shows that if labor force participation rates among women reached those of the men, just to be on the same level, annual global GDP could rise by 12% over the next 20 years, and here in the MENA region, this figure could reach 25%, because we're coming from behind. 
So these numbers become a little confusing when you're, you know, talking about so many percentages, so many numbers. But here we're talking about being able to multiply the size of the world economy after one generation by one fourth by including the women. It's as simple as that. It is a massive, massive potential that we have to take advantage of, that we have to use. In many countries, by the way, it is the single most important potential, simply because they are aging and because they have left many of the women out over the years. Now, good public governance is the foundation of inclusive growth. We must strive to promote open and innovative public sectors, which actively engage with our citizens, which focus upon expanding opportunities for all, which support businesses to create jobs and fuel the economy and provide high performing, accessible social services, particularly health and education. The MENA governments should also seek new ways to engage and address citizens' needs. And for that, we must always be innovative by including all stakeholders in the design and delivery of public services. Tunisia, for example, does just that in the implementation of its national open government agenda. It holds a monthly meeting, steering, it's in a form of a steering committee with representatives from public institutions and civil society organizations. Now, your Highness, uh, Dubai, the Emirates are promoters of open government. Actually, in the region, you are the ones who are leading the open government uh, effort. It's a prime example of commitment to strive for transparency, accountability, and the rule of law. It is precisely what our common effort should focus on. Make governments more responsive to the needs of the people. And for that, we need tools such as the Observatory on Public Sector Innovation to share lessons on how to innovate in areas like open government, public participation, youth, gender equality, etc. Governments must also take advantage of open data, big data, to generate better evidence for their policies. As I said before, you can't measure it, you cannot manage it, and if you cannot measure it, clearly you cannot improve it. Now, policymakers should dig down to the local level to see how policies are working. We normally use averages, national averages, subnational efforts are absolutely critical. We uh, normally go regional because going regional, you know, how's life in your region is the only way and that includes house life in your city, even house life in your town, is the only way in which you can improve the policies. Now, promoting inclusive growth in MENA requires a new vision for the public sector in order to ensure that governments remain responsive to changing circumstances and emerging challenges. Now, the United Arab Emirates vision 2021 is an excellent example of this way of addressing and sharing and then making the whole of the population own that vision of the future, commit to the vision of the future. It communicates where the United Arab Emirates wants to go, how to get there. It's a sort of a GPS. It's based on key national indicators and also on key national policy defin de definitions. I invite you to meet at the OECD Global Platform, at the OECD Innovation Pavilion, so that we can discuss with the political leaders how best to exploit the potential of public sector innovation to change people's lives. And here I'd like to underscore the focus of the presentation of the United States representative on the importance of innovation for improving people's lives. His Excellencies, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, 
dear president of the World Bank, you are the centers of government, the budget managers, the regulators, the public service innovators, the digital government leaders, the guardians of ethics, the, the leaders, the leaders. You have the power to inspire citizens to take action and responsibility, to engage your youth in civic life so that all citizens can take interest and ownership on the way our societies are organized and managed. The OECD stands ready to support your quest for new visions, new ambitions, new solutions towards better public governance. Count on the OECD. Together, we can design, develop, and deliver better policies for better lives. Thank you.